I'm Dr. Swasti, Senior Consultant Gynae Oncology at Max Institute of Cancer Care, Vaishali Patwarganj in Noida. And I'll be talking to you about gynae examination. In fact, we're going to demonstrate the gynae examination through visuals. What are the tips and what are the tricks of doing a gynae examination? So the basics are, one needs to be washing their hands and if appropriate, don a PPE, that is personal protective equipment, particularly relevant in the COVID-19 pandemic. It's very important to make the woman comfortable and introduce yourself to her, including your name and the role. So you have to confirm the patient's name and her identity so that you know that whatever you're going to document later in the examination findings would, would be particularly for the patient that you had examined. Every time one needs to examine the patient, we have to explain what the examination will be like and in, this should be in a patient friendly language. For example, you could say that, you know, you're going to do a gynae examination today and it involves a speculum examination whereby we will insert a small instrument into the vagina, which will not be painful, but they just feel something going inside. It will help us in, in visualizing the neck of the womb. It should not be painful. It will be just a little uncomfortable. And if it's uncomfortable or painful, you could just let me know and I could stop at any point of time. Beyond which we will do some uh, vaginal examination and uh, always encourage the need for a chaperone. A chaperone is a um, one of the female ward staff members, which is usually in all hospitals and clinic settings, usually a nurse, and uh, she should be present throughout the examination. The need for having a chaperone was initially, you know, very relevant when a, a male doctor was examining a female patient. But nevertheless, in today's days and times, it is always better, even if a woman is examining a woman, a chaperone should be there. An informed verbal consent should be gained before proceeding with the examination. You should reinforce and say that, you know, have you understood the kind of examination that you'll be going uh, to undergo? And are you happy with me proceeding with the examination? If they have any pain uh, or, you know, if they're pregnant prior to the examination, these things must be elicited. Before doing any gynae examination, it is very important for the patient or the woman to be encouraged to go and pass urine. Otherwise, the findings of the examination will be distorted. They, will, they should be told in complete privacy that they will have to undress for the clinical examination and lie down on the examination couch, cover themselves with the sterile sheet which has been provided. The patient should be given total privacy to undress and only should uh, the examination begin once the patient is all right and has undressed completely. So, um, you know, if you break up a gynae examination or a pelvic examination to, to various bits, it will involve, number one, inspection of the external genitalia, number two, a vaginal in, in examination, which involves inspection of the cervix and the vaginal walls by using a speculum, that is a spe per speculum examination, and palpation of the vagina, vaginal cervix by a digital examination and by manual examination of the pelvic organs. Also, no gynae examination is complete without a breast examination. So definitely a breast examination must, you know, be combined with a gynae examination and it should end by doing a rectal examination or a rec combined rectovaginal examination, which is very important, particularly when you are uh, dealing with suspected or proven cervical cancers or endometriosis. Uh, in women or in young girls where there is no history or evidence of sexual activity, it is not possible to do a speculum and a vaginal examination. In these situations, it is always advisable to do a rectal examination. I'll just share a very uh, interesting case with you. Uh, there was this girl about 19 years old who was referred to me with uh, bilateral ovarian masses. And I was told that she's got bilateral ovarian masses and she was referred for surgery. When she came to my OPD, I examined her and obviously I could not do a per speculum and a per vaginal examination as she, she was sexually inactive. So I proceeded on with a rectal examination. On a rectal examination, I found a growth in the rectum 
and when it was biopsied it was an adenocarcinoma and both the ovarian masses were actually Krukenberg tumor so there was no role of surgery she was a metastatic rectal cancer and uh, the primary treatment in this situation was initiated as systemic chemotherapy so your whole orientation your whole approach changes the moment you examine the patient properly and comprehensively so I will just start with inspection of the external genitalia and we know that vulva examination is important vulva and in fact also the side perineum so a non-sterile gloves can be worn and patient should be positioned in the modified lithotomy position the patient should be told to bring her heels towards the bottom and let the knees fall on the sides and just relax using, using deep breaths so that the patient can actually be examined without any problem now uh, this is important an adequate exposure is critical to any kind of vulval examination so what is vulva this area is the vulva okay here you find the external anal sphincter this is the vaginal orifice and this is the clitoris and the urethral orifice so adequate exposure is critical and what all do we look at the vulva we look at ulcers which may be associated with genital herpes. We look for abnormal vaginal discharge. If it's curdy, it could be candidiasis. If it's gray, it could be bacterial vaginosis. It could be yellowish gonorrhea or chlamydia. And uh, any kind of scarring due to any previous surgery, like an episiotomy during childbirth or a lichen sclerosis, uh, you know, or vaginal atrophy, which is very, very common in postmenopausal women. So they may have that very atrophic uh, vulval area. And there may be white depigmented lesions either in a figure of eight distribution which may be also very characteristic of lichen sclerosis. They may involve the vulva and the anal opening, external anal opening. Uh, we could also see masses in the vulva uh, which could include Bartholin cyst or a CA vulva, vulval cancer and varicocities which are um, common or secondary to chronic venous diseases or obstruction in the pelvis and female genital mutations, mutilations that is total or partial removal of clitoris and or, or labia or narrowing of the vaginal introitus. So uh, inspection of the vulva, we look at, so this is the labia majora, right? This is the labia majora and you should not only look at it without touching but you should also use two index fingers of both the hands to just split up and open up the labia majora so that you can see the labia minora. So this is the inside, this is the labia minora. The vulva should be inspected for scars, erythema, masses, discharge, bleeding, rashes, vesicles and so on. 